not a good one. Okay, class, take a look. So basically, I think if you still remember that uh, we are in the Prashnya Paramita, okay, I mean, we begin in Prashnya Paramita, I mean, six paramit, we go is the last paramit. Now we are going to three system. Okay, remember, the three system, they are quite different in ways to establishing the karma and also the, uh, also the way of how to leading to the Nibbana. They are different. Huh? We have finished number one, the Madhyamaka. Huh? So basically, Madhyamaka, or, or first, we are staying in the inherent entity, huh? something like that. Huh? Inherent entity means uh, it's like avijja. Huh? So meaning to say that uh, we are staying in the illusion of the world, all right? Uh, so uh, according to the Madhyamaka, basically, if let's say, I mean, uh, in conventional, in co conventionally, everything is exists conventionally, oh, but they are prachnyati, oh, there's a destination, oh, we decide, uh, everything actually is, how to say, uh, illusory fabricated, something like that, oh, okay, oh, uh, but anyway, we, we, we put a name on them, okay, oh, but in, in ultimate, oh, there is, uh, in ultimate, everything is conditioned, it exists by condition, even though Nibbana also exists based on condition. Okay. Now we are in the second tradition, second system. Second system means what? Consciousness, conscious, conscious mere only. Huh? So meaning to say that according to experience, the world is exists uh, huh? is due to the conscious. Okay. Huh? Uh, now, uh, now, okay, for, for this school, since their samadhi is very strong, they will realize that uh, huh? uh, once you are in the samadhi power. If your mind is, you, you think everybody becomes a select skeleton, then they all will become the skeleton. So they notice that actually the mind is so powerful. Uh, and it seems that uh, this, the, I mean, uh, if you compare the level of the truth, uh, uh, like what we encounter the world through using our, our normal faculty uh, and with the jhana, uh, it seems the jhana are more close to the reality. Uh, it's close to reality. Uh. So this is uh, something we call it as, uh, uh, I mean, uh, my, uh, the consciousness, uh, conscious only school. Uh, huh? So let's take a look. Huh? Uh, basically, uh, in previous lessons, uh, what did we talk about? Let's see. Huh? Okay, in previous less, uh, in previous lesson, we are still in one in this verse. Huh? Either there is no inherent nature. Or there is an inherent existence. Okay, it's the one seven nine, or we we call it as a no inherent nature. Okay, what does it mean inherent nature? Inherent nature meaning to say it may uh, uh, the thing exists by its own energy is inherent nature. But this is impossible. Everything is conditioning. We, we you we can't put and you you can't give example which is without condition. Everything is conditioning. See uh, So this is the point here. Uh, uh, or we call it inherent existence. Uh, okay, uh, then uh, you see uh, the various aggregates such as form and so forth must exist prior to the conventional establishment for the boot gala. Uh, they are conventionally established. So uh, meaning to say, uh, you see I, you see Mr. Leung, I see you all, we are considered conventional established. Okay, uh, so that is the meaning. Uh, we are so-called as a boot gala. Uh, Okay, then uh, sec secondly, in the Samadhi uh, Niro Chana Sutra, the convention uh, is divided into two types, the imaginary and dependence. Uh, then we got two types of a convention, uh, imaginary, imaginary and dependent. Uh, uh, basically class, we are in the imaginary. Okay, now we are in the imaginary. So there's an analogy uh, class. Uh, for example, uh, okay, there's a, a rule, Okay, so from rule, uh, maybe the light is not enough. So, or maybe you've got some sickness in your eye. So you will mistakenly deem the rule as a stick. So this is imaginary, all right. Oh. But, uh, once we, but, but once we clear the imaginary, we notice that, oh, when the light is, it is enough, when our eye recover, 
Oh, that is a, actually is a root only. And we notice that the root actually basically, uh, which it is consisted uh, of, of, I mean, it is consists of, it is made of uh, the fiber, all this stuff, okay? So that we come to the dependence, okay? Huh? Uh, so we from one truth to another truth, okay? Huh? So basically we are, we are living in the imaginary according to, to, the, uh, to, uh, to the, the definition. Uh, uh, remember, we look for other words to substitute the imaginary. What is the word, Mr. Leung? Huh? What is the better word to replace the imaginary, huh, Mr. Leung? Or how? Uh, on the mic, please. What's the word, sir? Uh, not, not sure, no. No idea. No idea. Mm -hmm. I think you copy down, right? Elena, Sally? Uh, we already conclude the better word from the Buddhist Thought Dictionary, right? Uh, on the fan first. No yes, any better words, remember? The systems produced from one's illusionary attachment and falsely considered to be real. Okay, so, uh, so it's, it's long sentence, no, no, no short words for replacement. Uh, what? Uh, inherent assistance. Inherent assistance. Uh, oh, okay, okay. So, so the definition. Remember that is the good definition. Uh, okay. Uh, we call it as uh, imaginary. Uh, I remember. Uh, it seems Mister Lung agreed that imaginary is still the best word, but the explanation. Uh, what Sally copy is the is good. Uh, it's something like illusion, illusionary. Uh, okay. Then next. Uh, a nature that is without inherent nature. Okay, then see how. Things that arise from cause and condition have inherent existence. You see, things arise from the cause and condition uh, have uh, inherent existence. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, class, uh, basically for this uh, conscious only school that insists one principle. It means what? All destination, all destination must rely on, on one entity inheritance, okay? Remember the definition of uh, uh, inher uh, uh, the inherent entity, right? Okay, inherent existence. Inherent existence, you need to say that something which is real, it is correct in English. Am I right? Inherent existence, something is real. Huh? So we need to say for this school, huh, whatever we see in the world, at the back, huh, at the, I mean, huh, everything behind, there must be something real one. Meaning to say, you see, uh, now I see Sally, I see Mr. Leong, we are all considered destination. Okay, we call it as a panyati. But once, well, if, if we go to analyze, uh, like for example, analyze Sally, huh, then Sally become a punch, finally a punch of the atom and molecule. And behind the atom molecule, there's something real one. Okay, the atom, atom and molecule is something that's real one, huh, according to this school. So meaning to say that, the, the, uh, for them, uh, uh, after you analyze cause and condition, and the cause and condition must be relied on one thing which is truth, okay? Oh. But for Madhya Maka, even though all the atom uh, and the kalapa, oh, they consider all this uh, is illusion. Uh, this is not true or so. Oh. So that is the difference. Uh, oh. Okay, next. Uh, oh. So we got the next paragraph. Uh, oh. So here, okay. Have not accomplished the five deeds. Ah, meaning to say that uh, for those who have completed the five deeds, uh, uh, we have to use this example, uh, a conscious only. Because of them, uh, you say, uh, huh, Nibbana also empty. Uh. Do you feel scared, you know, you see or not? Oh, because uh, Nibbana is something that lastly, uh, we, can, we can adopt or we, we can dwell on, right? Not, okay, you say the whole world is hallucination. Okay, I accept. But for some people, uh, Everything is hallucination. Then you, even though after the, the nibbana also hallucination, do you feel scared? So that's why uh, for conscious only school, they say the last one you see is real. And then people feel comfortable. Okay. Huh? So next paragraph, uh, huh? So Elena, uh, Elena, can you please start and uh, no, no, not chat up. Yes, uh, not chat up. Yes. Uh, then here, Nagarjuna meaning is the same as dia. Huh? Firmly opposed to Madhyamaka. All things are empty nature and are only conventionally designated. Okay. So next paragraph, please, Elena. If only how? If only they recall that they are still those who have been able to accomplish all of the five deeds and who have profound understanding that 
because of the existence of emptiness, all things can be established. Then the different sects could suit different capacity and preach their own ways without dispute. 180. Dependent origination has inherent existence. It's baseless discrimination. Based on consciousness, dependent origination can be established and then cause and then cause and effect can be well founded. That which arises from conditions and has inherent existence is identical with dependent nature. Being dependent on others is the law of all dependent origination. But the Mahayana mere consciousness system takes mere consciousness as its main doctrine. So being dependent on others is by nature baseless discrimination. That is, it is faulty consciousness. Sentient beings manifest activities have never been faultless. There are eight types of consciousness, but the fundamental discrimination is the so-called basis of all knowledge, alaya, consciousness, which is the foundation of all things. Relying on the fundamental alaya consciousness, all things that are produced by dependent origination are established. Alaya consciousness, which is also translated as storehouse consciousness, contains infinite seeds. These seeds engender manifest activities. The seven consciousness, along with the associated mental activities, sense organs, objects, and the world as receptacle. When all these things are engendered, they in turn are perfumed to become seeds stored in the Alaya consciousness. In this way, the nature of the Alaya consciousness is that of seeds, and all cause and effect can be well founded. Okay, thank you so much. I will please want to finish. Okay. Okay, class. Uh, now we talk about uh, how does the conscious only establish the theory? Uh. Okay, class, do you see me here? Right, you see me, right? Okay, uh, you hear me, right? Okay, uh, and, uh, so just now the lunch, uh, uh, Mrs. Leong Tao, you want to eat lunch? Uh, huh? Nichung
Yeah, so that's the point, you see, huh? so class uh, basically, uh, it, it, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, psychologically, huh? okay, once you're able to see me, you hear me, uh, basically we say, huh? we, we, well, there's a contact, there will be the relevant consciousness appear. You need to say that I contact external, uh, uh, I, I contact all the color, then there will be I consciousness. But I consciousness itself is not enough uh, to be connective to the whole world. Huh? So it will need to, uh, uh, the mind again to process it uh, in order to really know what you see. Am I right? Because you see, uh, now I see Sally, Elena, uh, 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 Mr. Leon. Well, uh, I consciousness itself is not enough to interpret all the information. Okay, huh? so I consciousness is very shallow in the very beginning. Only. Then later on, the mind has to reprocess again so that I will know, oh, you are the Sally, you are the Elena, and you are Mr. Leon. Okay, they get it. So same, huh? Like uh, the rice, uh, huh? So 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 meaning to say that, huh? Like just now, uh, Mrs. Leong, I said, oh, I add rice in the lunch. Okay, huh? So meaning to say that, okay, after all the experience, uh, huh, all the rice is well cooked and the rice is fragrance. Meaning to say that all the information we put as a memory, uh, or we use the word of a seed, or uh, we plant in some way. Okay, huh? so just now uh, through the reading, you said, oh, there's something we call alaya consciousness. Okay, yes, it's true. We call it as alaya consciousness. It's number eight consciousness. But sorry, you can't, you can't show me. Uh, I also cannot show you. Where is alaya consciousness? I cannot show you. Uh, but we know it must be somewhere. You see or not? Uh, okay, so uh, if you have to make a, take a guess, uh, you think the alaya consciousness possible is in the brain or possible is in the heart? Huh? So Sally, you think out uh, which part is it? Head. Head huh? Okay, if, if, if in the head lah, uh, why do you say that? Oh, I have a broken heart. Why did you say I have a broken head lah? Uh? <laughs> yeah, broken say, broken so, head gone case already. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I, I know, I know. You say oh, uh, I had the head lah. Uh, but how come you sometimes tell people say oh, I have a broken heart? You don't say I have a broken head, right? Not when when you when you when you feel sad uh, you will say oh, I'm so sad. You don't say, oh, I'm so sad. You don't do like that, right? You, because the feeling is here, right? So how come like that? See or not? <laughs> See or not? Okay, actually from here, we can we can count something according to some uh, some doctor. I mean, in medical field, uh, there's a few uh, transplantation of a heart. It will, it will, I mean, it will, re it will, it will result in the change of the character. There's numerous cases. Uh, uh, there's uh, old people, old folks. Uh, that the elderly uh, had undergone the, uh, the, uh, the heart transplantation from the kids, okay? But after the transplantation, he will possess some character of the kids. <laughs> he will prefer the tippets. So people start to think, uh, meaning to say that the memory uh, may be partial is in the heart. If, it, if, if it's totally in the brain, uh, it would happen, or uh, it would happen after the plant, it would, it would happen the change of the character after the the heart transplantation. Uh, but but why, how come uh, most of us will think about the kid? Uh, the reason is uh, the medication, uh, the Western medication, uh, they accumulate experience from the stroke. Because uh, 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 wherever part, uh, people under, under, under experience a stroke, uh, uh, so it seems that the particular part will be malfunction. So people that know that, oh, once uh, this part is uh, gone, uh, then you can't hear, or we know uh, it has something to do uh, uh, with the auditory system. Uh, and maybe uh, this part of the brain, it got stroke, uh, you can't see the thing. Uh, so people know that, oh, this is the part we call it as, uh, 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 what, what look is it? Uh, uh, then you can't see the thing you see. Uh, okay, uh, but yet again, uh, if let's say the memory, uh, maybe partial is in the heart, or maybe partial is in the brain. So once we, pass away, we will be reincarnated, right? But do we bring our heart or our, 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 our brain for reincarnation? Do we do the things or not? No, right? So we need to say that, uh, we say that once we pass away, immediately we reincarnate, but we didn't carry anything. But uh, according to uh, uh, what we know, it seems that uh, the past life, all, most of the memory, uh, all the karma, uh, we will just, uh, I mean, uh, we, uh, we will just, uh, I mean, uh, uh, bring forward, uh, we call it a uh, carry forward to the next life, right? A uh, carry forward. So, uh, so we need to say that the question will be, uh, if always you say emptiness, emptiness. So who are the one who carry all the karma, who store all the karma from one place to another? 
see or not, if you say emptiness, uh, it seems to be quite hard to answer these questions. Uh, uh, because uh, we inherit our past life habits, uh, uh, even though the memory, even some talent, you know. Uh, uh, I remember there's uh, <laughs> one lady he mentioned to me, he said, uh, uh, during young age, I go for uh, the fortune teller. The fortune teller said that, oh, you carry three things uh, from past life to this life. Number one, you carry a Caesar. Second, you carry a, a Shimpun. Uh, 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 Shimpun, uh, you say, uh, uh, this, this two things, uh, uh, the last I forgot. Then you say, oh, I think he's correct uh, because uh, import my mathematics so good. Uh, so that's why what I should put call it. Then second, uh, it's called a Caesar. Huh? Because I want, uh, the lady said, uh, once I saw the shirt, uh, I know how to cut it out already. Uh, so meaning to say that uh, even the fortune teller, uh, uh, they some some say she, huh? they're able to see that, oh, you, you, you bring all the habits to this life. Uh, so it made more uh, uh, was able uh, was able to, I mean, uh, to play the piano in eight years old me, right? So we need to say that uh, there must be something uh, carry all this type of memory and karma. So we call it as uh, a liar. I like it. I like it a lot. Because uh, uh, whatever we do, uh, we call it as a seed or plant in a liar. Uh, we can't see it. But a liar, we store everything. And in next life, and then uh, Alaya, we from this life go to another life. Uh, but always remember, uh, in order to avoid uh, become a wrong will, the Alaya is not something permanent. Uh, the Alaya is something, it still keep on changing one. Uh, uh, it's just like what? Uh, it's just like, uh, so Elena, you see, you plot a lot of graph, right, Elena? You plot a lot of graph, okay. Uh, so uh, the graph uh, maybe uh, for the GDP of Malaysia for the past, uh, past 20 years, but you see, uh, one, one, once you plot the graph, uh, the graph then will be a line, right? Okay, but how did the line come from? It's come from the dot, right? Uh, every year you've got the record, so you try to link the whole thing. Uh. But basically the graph, we need to say it doesn't exist one. It's just the, 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 the graph uh, is due to you try to link all every year the GDP, then you see a graph here. So the alliance consciousness is just like a graph. It's, it looks quite so real, but actually it consists of from all the, all the karma. Oh, it's, it's the keep on karma in and out. So once the karma come in, we give it a name as a, if we plant inside to our alive consciousness, we call it as, as a seed. But once the seed appear through our, our organs, we call it as what? This is the manifest activity. Ah, manifest activity. Uh, so meaning to say that you see, uh, uh, during this uh, COVID-19, you see how uh, we, we saw that wow, the people, uh, there are so many people uh, declare bankrupt or so many people that don't have much money in the saving. So these are uh, all go plant to our heart. Lah, huh? Then it, it becomes what? Uh, meaning to say that uh, this we call it as the seed go into us. Okay, the seed to go into us. Huh? For example, lah, huh? uh, maybe Elena huh, want to travel the whole world, but due to this event, huh, so Elena said, no, lah, I don't want to travel the whole world. It's enough already. I will stay in my home for forever. So meaning to say that, lah, Meaning your heart is changing already. Oh. So this we call it what manifest activity. Because uh, your, your, our, our, our karma, our, our thinking, our whatever, all is changed already. It's due to all, I mean, I mean the seed does, uh, I mean, how should I put it? Huh? Seed is something we plant in. Okay, huh? then the karma will come up, is, we call it as a, a manifest activity. The manifest activity uh, can be influenced uh, by whatever seed we plant in. So that's an example only. Lah, huh? uh, so after this COVID, lah, if people start changing, uh, meaning to say that uh, wherever we plan in uh, for the, during this two-year period, uh, it's already changed our mind. So our manifest activity, we also keep on changing already. Uh. Uh, so recently, there's a lot of violence. I mean, uh, uh, family, uh, so you see recently in the newspaper, uh, emphasize the violence for the woman, for the girl, because they stay at the home, have been bullied. Uh, then a lot, very high uh, divorce rate. So all this, uh, uh, once we listen and we, we know uh, it, it plant into our heart, then we start changing already. So the manifest activity also will start, keep on changing. The people will act different now uh, before the, the COVID-19 events already. Okay, you get it? Uh? So that is how we explain uh, to understand uh, this is the field of the terminology. Uh, uh, so let's take a look and see how. Uh, mm, okay, how? Uh, mm. Okay, huh? 
Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, you see, uh, now you see, uh, fundamentally, okay, we call it as a liar consciousness, okay. Huh? So it con contains infinite seeds. Uh, so we plant things inside, we call it as a seed. Uh, huh? Then the seed engender manifest activity, become the activity, come up, okay. Huh? Okay, we've got some more uh, good things are coming, huh? like student of the mere consciousness tradition. Yes, Sally, your turn to read, please, students. Uh, Students of the mere consciousness tradition rely on inherent assistance to establish all things. So cause and effect is also inherently assist. A liar consciousness, which is by nature seed-like, is called the dependent origination of discriminating inherent nature. For example, the seed of an eye consciousness engenders eye consciousness. The seed of the year engenders the year. The seed of greed engenders greed. The seed of color green engenders color green. The seed of faulty engenders faulty. The seed of faultless engenders fa the faultless. Whatever seed engenders a particular manifest activities is in turn perfumed to become a particular seed. This seed-like nature is called the differentiated function of direct production of the seed's own fruit. This is the view of cause and effect in which inherent nature is understood to produce inherent nature. In addition to the seed, other factors still need to be present before the fruit is produced. However, this is called dependence or relying on others or others to arise. As can be seen, this mere consciousness view cause and effect that the seed of inherent existence engenders manifest activities of inherent existence. The emptiness view of cause and effect that there is no inherent nature differs significantly. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Okay, class, uh, can you check for me? Uh, is this sentence make sense or not in English? Uh, whatever seed and gender of particular manifest activity is in turn perfumed to become particular seed. Does this make sense or not? Huh? It is an English. English. Okay, okay. Uh, Sally, can you explain in different differently to me? Huh? How come the perfume is there? Huh? The perfume means to uh, like, like you, like, like you put something like uh, maybe one flower, a rose flower like that. The perfume, then if you put onto your skin, it smells like rose. Oh, oh that's the meaning. Like that, oh, okay, okay. Uh, it's so, okay, so simple, Okay, okay. Get it, get it. Okay, it's English. Uh, nothing wrong with the English. Uh, okay. So class, let's no. take a look. Uh, 
So the whole text, it means what? Uh, uh, here we have a one, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the concept, I'll uh, try to convey to us that why there is an eye consciousness, because there's an eye seat. In the layer, there will be many, many, many seeds. Okay, oh. whatever seed you got, then it's able to produce the fruit. So why? Uh, okay, so people will ask, uh, oh, why are you able to have an eye consciousness because there's an eye seat? Okay, oh. so why uh, you can hear because you've got ear seat? Likewise, uh, maybe people will think, oh, how come if you meditate, you will attain to the jhana? Okay, oh. uh, we will say, oh, you must be have some seat inside. And likewise, uh, okay, uh, if you can attain to the Nibbana, oh, you must be some seed of the Nibbana inside your heart. Sounds logic, right? It seems good, right? Or oh, everything, uh, you need to say, you got to sit there. So the seed, uh, uh, with all the condition, then it will be arise. When it arise, uh, so uh, we call it as a cause and condition. The theory of a cause and condition could be established. But with the help of the seed, uh, we still need a seed to begin everything, uh, right? See a lot, oh, it seems quite logic. Oh. So we need to say that from this theory, oh, we can explain oh, uh, how, the, how do we behave. Oh, uh, and also uh, the seed that could be planned within this year, and it could be planned in our next uh, past life. Oh, so, so all the seed that will appear, so it makes us, uh, why, why everybody happy is so different. Some is so generous, some is so stingy. Okay, uh, some uh, can hold the precept so well and some totally cannot hold the precept. So that's meaning to say that all the difference uh, is due to the seed we plant before and whatever we plant before, it will perfume, it will influence, I mean, the whole things and then your habits get, getting different already. See or not? Uh, so that's why uh, for some Arahana, even though uh, 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 they are arahana, but it's due to the perfume. Uh, uh, you need to say because they use for being angry or arrogance, even though they are liberated, but due to the habitual, the perfume, uh, uh, the perfume effect, so there's you still can feel they got some vasana. Uh, uh, okay, so that is called as a habit. Uh, uh. Okay, uh, then next, let's take a look. Uh, so that is the meaning for the whole passage. Uh, uh. Then here, uh, this mere conscious view of cause and effect. Okay, so there's no much thing. Huh? So we, we go to the next paragraph a uh, deeper a little bit. Huh? Uh, Mr. Leo, maybe you can try to have a read, check your effect. Uh, huh? Things outside the mind. Huh? Uh, Mr. Leo, can you try, please? Uh, on the mic, please. Okay. Verse 181. Things outside the mind are non existence and the mind's consciousness is not, in principle, non-existent. Realizing that false external objects are manifested through mere consciousness, one can enter reality. Based on the will of cause and effect in which consciousness totally discriminates seed and gender, manifest activities, and manifest activities perfume seeds, it can be said that things outside the mind are non-existent. Sentient beings intuitively think that external objects are real and are objectively existing forms that this matter. Upon introspection, the mind also seems to be a perceived object. Sentient beings have held this distorted and erroneous view from the beginning, and all their attachments to the self and things come from it. This is the imaginary character that is empty without inherent, inherent nature. But the convention must be the real. The mind's consciousness, which inherently exists and is the basis of all conventional existence, is not in principle non existence. If the mind is also to be without inherent nature, then And perfume. Consciousness is baseless but has individ individuality. When consciousness is engendered from its own seat, and that seat, that phenomenon which has consciousness as its nature, therefore also engenders manifest activity. That which has become manifest has two characteristic features 
that which can discriminate and that which is the object of discrimination. It seems that the mind and the object are independent, but actually the object is not separate from the mind and has mental consciousness at its nature. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, then we we'll stop here. Huh? Many things already. Huh? Okay, finish. Okay, I think it's a little bit, I mean, uh, okay, let, uh, I can make you understand by putting an example. Huh? So, Elena, is your brain working today? It doesn't work. So, let me, so let me talk uh, with Sally. Huh? Okay, Sally, on the mic, please. Okay. Huh? Okay, Sally, uh, please answer me. Huh? Okay. Huh? Whatever you see is the real is, is whatever you see in the real world is objectively exists and reflected. It is correct or not? Whatever you yeah. see, you say yes, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so for example, okay, Sally, do you see how many people in the screen? In the street. In the screen, in the screen, in your computer screen. How oh, many? Yeah. How many? Five. Five, all right, okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, five, huh? so silly. So this is what you see, huh? then you, you say it is all objectively exists. Huh? Mm -hmm. But what if, if, I, if I say that, huh? no, I saw six people, they got one more people is there. Okay, if I'm able to see that extra one people, huh? so meaning to say that, silly, you are your brain is, is functioning properly or, 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 or malfunction. Sally, you think? My brain is not malfunctioning. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So Sally, meaning to say that possible is my brain got problem? Right? No? Yeah. But, possible, right? But also possible, possible. that uh, I have a special capability. So yes. I'm able to see six people, but you cannot see. It is this correct? Yes. Okay. Huh? Yeah. So meaning to say that the world we perceive actually is Actually, it's not the real world. It's, it's, it is, I mean, uh, okay, well, the, the world, I mean, how should I put it out? Okay, uh, the world, we define the world, actually it's the world in our brain, but not what we see. Do you understand what I mean? The world, 
the world which is defined by us is the world defined by our brain. Whatever in fact in the brain, reflect in the brain is the world we see in the brain. We, it's the world we see. Okay, but sometimes our, our brain is not able to detect all the information, for, for example, the extra other one people. So for you, you don't get that, that particular extra people. So you mm. thought that particular people doesn't exist. It's because mm. your brain uh, cannot reflect it. It's not because your brain malfunction, it's because you don't have much capability. But for me, I'm able to see another one people, meaning to say in our brain, reflect six people. For me, this is the real world. Ah, I, I see there's a real world. The real world is just, it's not, it's, it's, it doesn't come really from the eye and the ear only. It's because the brain able to sense the other extra one people. Do you get it? No? Ah, yeah. So meaning to say that, uh, the way, the best way to understand this, this school is uh, what will reflect in your mind, Actually, it's the world we think it is. Okay, huh? it could be different, it could be objective. For example, huh? now got one sun only, huh? and one moon now is raining. Everybody's we feel the same thing, right? It is objective, but then raining one, then everybody see raining one. Oh, so it's objective. One sun only, oh, this is also objective, you see or not? Mm. Because uh, all our brain reflect one sun and re reflect now it's raining, okay? Huh? But it could be, it could be differently. Uh, meaning to say that uh, uh, sometimes uh, if you I have a problem, okay, huh? so you, you cannot ever see to see the, you see the sun become a moon. So in your brain, you, you, you come out, it's a, it's a moon. So you say, no, there is a moon, it's not the sun. I think you something, you, you, you got something wrong already, you see? So meaning to say that the eye, uh, the, 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 the malfunction of the faculty huh, can, can change uh, the result of your world, which reflect in your brain. See or not? Okay, uh, so, so meaning to say that, if that's the case, uh, is there something we call it objective or not? Yes or no? Object. Is there any, if that's the case, uh, is there any objectivity? Yes or no? Or there's no such thing of objectivity, or actually uh, no pure subjective, there must be include some, uh, there's no something called objective, there must be some subjectivity involved. Two, one. <laughs> is is my English something wrong? <laughs> Anything wrong with my English? Uh, 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 you know what I want my questions? Nothing wrong with my English, uh, it's because you don't know how to decide. Am I right? Mm. Uh, my English yeah. is okay. Uh, uh, I can use the English properly, uh, but you just don't know whether which one is correct. Uh. Is, is there any something pure objectivity or nothing as a pure objectivity? There must be some subjectivity inside the objectivity. One or two, I just bet on me. La. <laughs> no three, one or two <laughs> knee. <laughs> See, not quite hard, quite hard to decide, right? Okay, it is true. If my language, no problem, actually, yeah, they got two school. Both are correct. So number one, they said, yes, there's something called pure objectivity. And the second school said, no such thing as a pure objectivity. There must be some subjective involved in any objectivity. So that's why you see how, huh? I, I, actually the second school is more agreeable. Huh? The reason you see it, huh, as what I said now, if I say, I say extra another one people, there must be some subjectivity involved. Okay, for, but for Sally, since you cannot see the extra one, for you insist the screen only five people only, I cannot say you're wrong, right? Am I right? Because your objectivity involves your subjectivity, meaning to say that even though you don't have the special capab uh, capability to see the extra one people, but this is your world, right? So meaning to say that objectivity involves some subjectivity. As for me, since I've got special talent, I'm able to see the extra one people, but this is also involved my subjectivity, right? So we got such thing like we call it as a pure objectivity, no such thing really. It is correct. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Elena, you better go back to your boss. Uh. There's no such thing of a pure objectivity. Uh. <laughs> so just simply buy the shit. <laughs> okay, it's joke only. Uh, okay, so uh, so class, uh, what is the why what I have to bring it about? Uh, because uh, class, uh, if you if you if you remember uh, what the sentence we try to highlight, uh, it seems it's mentioned it said. We're right in fact in the mind actually. Uh, you see this object. So the object itself actually uh, uh, it carries some consciousness. It reflects in your consciousness. Am I right? The sentence says it said 
whatever object you see, it reflects the consciousness. But I use the brain uh, because whatever we see is because there is some picture of it, it appeared in our mind. But nowadays we call it, it appeared in our brain. You see, it's the same concept with me. So meaning to say that uh, our mind and also the object is integrated together. You can separately, right? So like, like, like now, we see five people in the screen. Okay, yo, there is an object in your mind, but you can't separate them, right? Uh, you can't separate the mind and the other five people, you can't. Because the other five people, they all reflect. You can see them, it's due to the consciousness, and the consciousness reflect the five people, then you can see them. It is correct. Uh, so you cannot, you cannot separate them, you see how. Okay, let's take a look out. Uh, let's let's check the sentence i see uh. okay sit and gender manifest activity uh, this one not difficult la, uh. okay external objects are real and are objectively existing form you see uh, we call it uh, uh, why, why we feel, feel so real you see i say sun eh, it's real right oh uh, uh, i see the moon oh it's just so real right it's raining is so real right uh, so for us we think it is objectively is objectively exit uh, because all of us feel the same moon and the same sign as in the raining situation. See, uh? then let's take a look. See, standing being have health. Uh, this distorted erroneous view from the very beginning. Actually, uh, if you really check, uh, uh, whatever we see actually is the distorted and erroneous view. You see, and we got some attachment there. Uh. So for the sun and the moon, we don't see, we don't, we, 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 we don't see any. Uh, Attachment, uh, but uh, the attachment is where is it? Uh, it's from something that we belong to. Uh, uh. Like Sally, you got your electrical car, uh, then we got our saving, we got our, our belongings. Actually, we got some attachment there. Because uh, when, is, when, when we lost it, uh, oh, we feel sad, you see, or not? Uh, so that is the erroneous view. Uh. It's, it's high. I mean, uh, uh, the, all the erroneous is behind, uh, all from our belongings, you see. So conventionally must be based on the real one. Huh? So uh, meaning to say that whatever we say is a conventionally exit, they must be based on the real one. Huh? Okay, uh, uh, how, how should I put it? For example, you see, uh, like, like Sally, huh? okay, you are conventionally exist, right? But if I analyze you, uh, finally, I will, you will end up become a atom, atom, and galapa, galapa. So this galapa uh, and go inside uh, is all the earth, water, air. So meaning to say that they are the real, they are the existence. Uh. So meaning to say that uh, you, uh, all the destination is based on the real, the last one, uh, uh, which is a tissue uh, for uh, the water, earth, air, fire. Uh, they are the real things uh, to make the whole world appear. Okay. Then let's see how. Okay, the mind and the object have been connected uh, one another and perfume to become the seed. Yes, I'm meaning to say that you see, huh? uh, uh, once you see the object, okay, uh, so then you try to influence it, then you plant inside to your heart, okay. Huh? And next, uh, it seems that the mind and object are interdependent, but actually the object is not separate from the mind and has mental consciousness as its nature. Yeah, as I mentioned here, like, oh, you can't separate the mind and the object. Oh, like you see, oh, now uh, Mr. Leung disappeared already, right? Uh, so this is objectively disappeared, Mr. Leung. Oh, we all know this, that we all see the same thing, you see. Oh, they are objectively disappeared. Oh, so we all see the same thing, okay? Oh. Okay, then uh, next, so what we're going to see, uh, okay, uh, so this is the few things on me, huh? okay. Order the form, huh? so we need another two big sentences. Uh, huh? So, Elena, your turn to read, please. Uh, huh? Order the form, uh, please. Uh. Order the form of the object outside the mind does not exist. The form of the object that is not separate from the mind's consciousness does exist and is engendered from the seed of the object itself. This is called the natural object. It is non-existence only if it is formed from the erroneous attachment of the mind's consciousness. Thus, all the causes and effects that have a dependent nature can be established. Nevertheless, the nature of all things is consciousness. They all exist inherently, so they cannot be said to be empty without inherent nature. Just as the mere consciousness is relied upon to establish cause and effect, Mere consciousness is also relied upon to establish confusion 
enlightenment. Sentient beings not understanding that the external, the phenomena is mere consciousness, are utterly confused and mixed up, and take this as the source for their attachment to the self and to the things. From this erroneous attachment, the afflictions arise and create karmic results, which are then perfumed in a in alaya consciousness. When the seed of karma matures, reward of retribution is received. Alaya consciousness is therefore called consciousness with fruits that mature at varying times. Such is the essence of the transmigrations through the cycles of birth and death. On the other hand, if one relies on contemplation to thoroughly understand that external objects are really non-existent, that they lack inherent nature, and that they manifest and become established only through consciousness, then based on their dependent nature, one can know that the imaginary nature is empty. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Okay, finish. Uh, so class, let's take a look. You see how uh, maybe uh, the way they express or uh, make the things complicated actually uh, is the same uh, in Nikaya. Uh, so class, I'm uh, meaning to say, uh, you see, whatever we see, uh, for example, uh, Sally, uh, Sally, what's your, uh, I mean, uh, what's your preference? Uh, you are more, you found that you are more attached to your electrical car or more attached to your, to your cake, uh, Sally. Uh. Uh, which one you attach mostly uh, compared to no, electric car and the No car. competition, uh, I love cars. <laughs> oh, you love cars, uh, car. cars. <laughs> like yeah. not, yeah. you, oh, I thought you like the kicks only. Uh. Okay, so so you see, uh, okay, Sally, uh, you see the car, right? So the car is reflect in your heart, in your mind, right? So according to the Alaya consciousness, uh, we call it as an imaginary actually. Ah, but the car appeared in your in your Alaya consciousness, it's not something real, real one or uh, but you think it is real, so that's why you got the attachment there. You see or not? Uh, but uh, if later on you found out uh, actually the car uh, actually is comprises uh, from the tire, from the spare part, or uh, that you see or not, why we see something beautiful is because uh, due to the, after the combination, right? See or not? Uh, same uh, you notice, oh, the man is so handsome. It's, it's, it's I mean, uh, all the, all the, how to say, uh, the, you feel something is beautiful is after the combination, you see or not? But uh, but once uh, you try to dissemble the thing, uh, it doesn't look beautiful already, right? Or uh, uh, okay, am I right, Sally? If let's say I dismantle yeah. your car, uh, I think uh, you wouldn't like your your car anymore <laughs> because it's just like a scrap, right? 
Uh, men also the same, oh. uh, I mean, the, the people also the same, oh. when you dismantle, oh, they don't look beautiful already, you see, you know, oh. uh, so we need to say that we are always in imaginary, see, uh, it reflects in our consciousness, but if let's say you're able uh, to notice that, uh, they are dependent, uh, they are dependent originality, uh, the, the, the conditioner, you know, they are combined from different, different components, uh, uh, then no more attachment will come to you, see, oh. so let's check, uh, now you see here is the meaning here, you see how it's here. Now, uh, they are all exist inherently, so they cannot be said to, to be empty without inherent nature. Huh? Okay, then a mere consciousness also is rely on to establish confusion and enlightenment. You see, or not? we also use this mere consciousness uh, uh, to establish the confusion. Okay, confusion means the avijja. Huh? Okay, remember this, it means the ignorance. Huh? Please change it to the ignorance. Huh? Mm. Then we are utterly confused and mixed up and take this as a source of the attachment to the self and the thing. Okay, how we create the karma or based on whatever we see from our conscious. Okay, or based on the dependent nature, one can know that their imaginary nature is empty. So you have to you have to know uh, you have to use the dependent nature. Uh, uh, dependent nature meaning to say that you try to disassemble the thing, you analyze, you know this all oh, actually it's come from. Uh, uh, different different conditions. Uh, okay, so next paragraph. Uh, yes, uh, Sally, your turn to read. If phenomena, uh, if phenomena is are empty and cannot be attained, then the baseless discrimination consciousness will not arise, realizing that objects are not uh, not attainable and that consciousness is in turn not attainable. One can enter the reality of mere consciousness. Emptiness, the truth. The truly real nature is that which relies for its manifestation on non-attaching dependent nature. Thus, it also cannot be said to be empty. For example, it is said, the reason for mere imaginary nature is the object. The reason for dependent nature is discrimination. The reason for ultimately real nature is the twofold emptiness. And based on consciousness that is attainable, objects cannot be attained are engendered. Based on objects that cannot be attained, consciousness that cannot be attained is engendered. Because by nature consciousness can be attained, it also becomes that which cannot be attained. Thus it is known that both that thus it is known that both that which is attained attain, and which cannot and which is not attained are equal. Okay, now my but, stop here, Sally. Uh, Mr. Lai, uh, uh, Mr. Leung, the line is so so bad. We try to finish this paragraph. Huh? So hopefully actually, like, actually got one more paragraph only, you know, see for finish already, huh? Ah, finish yes, the whole yes. thing. Mm. Okay, okay, lah. So finish it. Uh, Mr. Leung, they, they cannot connect well. Huh? Yeah, please continue, yes, uh, Sally. Huh? Consciousness is attainable and exists inherently and is based and based on this cause and effect and confusion and enlightenment can be established. Such is the such is the main doctrine for false and imagination mere consciousness system. For those who have not accomplished all the five deeds, this doctrine is truly ingenious. Moreover, establishing the conventional base on the real is originally the basic position of the Hinanaya Savasdivadin, the realistic school. Embracing and transforming the teachings of the Hinayana Savasdivadin into Mahayana teaching is that the nature of all things is empty. Through explaining the true nature of all things, and the 18 realms through the doctrine of mere consciousness demonstrates the in, inconceivability, skillful means of the Buddha and the Bodhisattvas. Okay, thank you so much.
Okay, class. <clears throat> okay, what's the meaning here? Let's take a look. Huh? Okay, class, uh, basically, as we mentioned <clears throat> in the very beginning, that uh, huh? so the world, okay, there's one is the conventional truth, one is the ultimate truth. Okay, huh? uh, for Madhyamaka, the ultimate truth all is conditioned and they are all emptiness. Okay, huh? whereas the ultimate truth uh, for the conscious, for the conscious only. This must be the real one. It must be. It must be really exists. Okay, huh? So meaning to say that that is the different. Huh? But uh, in order to make them, uh, 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 of course, uh, the conventional truth. Both they agree. Huh? This is not the real one. Huh? This is the This is the designated. Both of them agree for this. Uh, meaning to say that this is the imaginary uh, for both school. Huh? But in order uh, to make uh, this one the Savasti Vada, huh? to accept the Madhyamaka. Huh? So this still is necessary. Uh, now one they come, okay, they agree. Oh, right. The world is, I mean, uh, this is the uh, illusion. Uh, uh, this is the destination. Uh, let them agree first. Uh, once they agree, we proceed to mention to them, oh, okay. So what you think, it seems every, all the destination must be relied on something reality. Uh, this is true. Uh, but finally, we tell them, uh, what you rely on, which is the true, the ultimate true as the Nirvana, actually also it could be empty. Uh, it, it could be, I mean, uh, it's not necessarily must be the real one. Uh, because uh, one, this is empty, uh, meaning to say that all the, all everything is the possible, uh, meaning to say everything is possible. Uh, uh, so the layman can become the Buddha because uh, uh, it is empty as a nature. Uh, so uh, all everything is possible can happen. Uh, so that is the meaning here. Huh? So you see, for example, huh? okay, A and B marry. So they got the children as the B. Okay, huh? okay. So we need to say that in I mean the conventionally, conventionally, huh? A conventionally exists, B also conventionally exists, and they got a son, we call it as a C, also conventionally exists, right or not? Okay, huh? but seems uh, they are they are uh, but 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 three of them are. Uh, they are basically they are the true. I mean, uh, they are uh, um, uh, they are empty as a nature, huh? Because uh, if they are not empty in the nature, huh? So book one once book for them, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 they can be exist without any condition. If that's the case, uh, how can they marry? Right? Not mm. they must be conditioning. So once they marry, they have a possibility uh, to to I mean, uh, to make C come up. C or not. So meaning to say that conventionally, uh, you notice that A and B, then they marry. Uh, conventionally, A exists, B exists, and then they marry. And then they got a kid. So we give his name as a C. So that is a conventional truth. Okay. Uh, in reality, uh, they are empty in nature. They are empty in nature. And C also is empty in nature. But since everything is empty in nature, meaning to say they can marry and they can have a C. If they're not empty in the nature, how they can't they can be married. Uh, so they themselves is always be, be themselves, you see. But it's impossible for them uh, to create the sea. Just like once people die, you see. No? You see, uh, okay, uh, when, when, when I die, okay, uh, 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 when, when, when A die, okay, uh, then you will be reincarnation to become the B. Uh. So what is the relation between A and B? A and B, they are not similar. If you say both are similar, it's wrong already. Am I right? Uh? But if you say A and B is totally unrelated, it's just wrong, it's also wrong. Huh? So the correct one is what? A and B, they are related. Okay, so we need to say that they are different. Okay, uh, they are different, of course, because uh, past life and this life, they will be different. Of course, what? But, uh, and, but one thing is that uh, uh, they, are, they, are, they are not separate entity. Why? Because uh, uh, B is come from the past life from the A. Uh, so they are related. So that is the meaning now. Uh, so once there's an emptiness, uh, everything is a possible. Okay. Uh, so that is uh, that that is the what the theory mentioned here. Uh, uh.